Hello YouTube again. Thought I'd just uh, check in, give you an update. I'm in the garage again. I've been doing some work as you can probably see. It's not paint. <laughs> it's a specialist. Uh, well, it is a paint. It is sort of a paint. But it's not sort of like the, the, the final coat. It's, uh, it's sort of like a protective layer that you do paint on. And it's it's to stop any mould, mildew, and, and things like that actually, uh, you know, coming through the bricks. Which, if you remember from your last video, that's the problem in this garage. Uh, behind this wall, this wall is just uh, soil up to about well, about here, about there. It's just soil. You can see the level actually on that on that wall there because I haven't painted that yet. Uh, and and that's because my neighbor's floor level is about four feet higher than than ours so behind here is just brick and over the decades this was house was built in 1933 as the other ones were uh, I think the dampness in the soil has just penetrated into the bricks and the mortar and it's it, it's caused it to look like that funnily enough it's not wet it just looks manky <laughs> Uh, the floor's more wet, but that's because I've got a leaky ceiling as well, which I've sealed. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll get this uh, protective skin and you just paint it on. You put it on in about three or four coats. I've put one coat up at the top, even though that's bone dry. So I didn't really need to, but I thought I'll just test it. And then, as you can see, it's much whiter here. Uh, this is where I've been building it up. Uh, where it's it's damp uh, or whatever it is and uh, and hopefully that will uh, that will protect the wall and then I'll just get some masonry paint at the weekend do well fill these in as well between the bricks uh, get some masonry paint and then I'll paint over the top as the final coat and then continue round the garage in this direction uh, because all the other walls are perfectly dry. It's bare brick, but it's perfectly dry. So I'll just masonry paint over the top of them. That'll take me about two weeks because I'm only doing it in bits and pieces. And then by the time I get round, I can check this wall and if it's still good, you know, if nothing's coming through the paint, I'll say okay. I'll then I'll then use the same paint on uh, on, on this part as well. Because it's expensive, bloody expensive, <laughs> and I didn't want to, uh, to buy two or three tubs if it wasn't going to work. So this is sort of like my test wall, uh, just to see if it works, basically. So that's what I've been doing, uh, just coming out into the garage. We, it's a big garage. Well, it's a single garage, but still, it's. Well, it's, it's five metres, which I don't know, It's well, it's just under five metres. It's probably about 15 feet long, and it's three three metres, so that's about 10 feet wide. That's a big space just to be doing nothing with. Uh, well, we do. We, we throw junk <laughs> boxes, and then we get a chap to come and take it all away. Uh, but, but it's just a waste of a space. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to try and turn it into a usable room. We can have, there's electricity here, so I can have my office in here. Uh, we could have a chest freezer in here. I can do my home brewing in here. Uh, storage shelves, maybe in these little alcoves, because this pillar is here, because it's holding up <laughs> the rest of the street. So we could have like storage shelves uh, in the alcoves. And I was thinking of taking away the garage door that's down there. And my nephew's a builder. He's a, he's a bricklayer by trade. And uh, he could get into uh, bricking up halfway and then we can have a window. And that would be a nice big window. Let him know what to light. There's already a window. When it's less messy, <laughs> I'll show it you. I'll turn the camera around. But there's a nice big window here. There's a door there, and I was thinking of having a stable door, uh, so I could open it up in the summer, half of it, if I'm sat here, uh, you know, as my office. 
had a new radio room because I'm an amateur radio uh, operator, so I could have my radios in here. And so there's a door there, and then there's a window there, as you've probably gathered, because I've got a lot of natural light on my face. So there's a window here as well. Uh, so it'll be a really nice, bright, airy sort of place. Uh, and such a shame just to be letting it go. And I've, I haven't done anything with it for about 15 years. And it's just, I'm just thinking, nah, we need more space in the house anyway. So let's utilise this. So that's what I've been doing. That's that's my update. Uh, hopefully this will work. And uh, and we can start moving ahead and getting getting the rest of the, the room, the uh, rest of the garage uh, in some sort of... Uh, tip-top condition so yeah oh oh I've uh, commissioned a new e-pipe <laughs> not from uh, Underwood Mods though I'm not I haven't got an e-pipe today I'm, I'm using my Zelos uh, simply because I'm out here working and I don't want to bring me really nice pipes uh, Underwood Mods and all this Underwood Pipes in, into this environment so I, I've just brought brought this with me uh, no the, the, the pipe that I've commissioned is from a guy called I think it's called Epos or Epos EPOS but his website's very creatively named 3PO5.com I think that's it but if you just put in 3PO5 or Epos um, it'll come up go and look at his pipes <laughs> Oh my God, they're, they're beautiful. And what I really liked about them is that they're, they're very traditional in their shape, uh, in the look of them. Uh, they seem to be very traditionally inspired. Uh, like so, some e-pipe makers can seem to go off on a tangent. And I, I'm not interested in that. I don't really like it. You know, if you've seen my, uh, my un, uh, Underwood mods, uh, they are sort of traditionally shaped uh, and that's what I like but I, I wrote to him I said uh, you've got no pipes for sale on your website are you uh, are you still working so they're beautiful he said yes but only to commission so this is like my gallery because he, he does it as a hobby uh, so I said oh wow okay then I said I've got a pipe in mind that I've always liked but I'm a vapor, and I, you know, I said I've, I've got some Underwood mods. Uh, I said it's a Savinelli 320. Do you think you could interpret it as an e-pipe? He said, "I've been thinking about the Savinelli 320 myself." <laughs> oh, okay, Jason, great. Yes, Jay, listening on the Digicom. Oh, sorry, that's uh, that's just me, Zello. my radio. So I said, I said, oh, great. I said, uh, he said, yeah, and he showed us a drawing of it. He'd actually done a drawing of a 7 l 320 and how he would, you know, make it into an e-pipe. I said, great. I said, when can you start? <laughs> well, a hey, good, good bloke is this. He came back. He said, well, what tank are you going to use on it? He says, are you using a rebuildable? And I thought, this man knows what he's talking about. So let me tell you something. Rebuildable drippers are a perfect, perfect match to an e-pipe. Absolutely perfect. Better than these. Better than these. It just, it, it's just all part of that, that zen, you know, with a dripper. It's like your yeah, attention. Oh, sorry, I'll turn that down. Beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Monitoring channel through. Oh, okay. yeah. good morning. Yep, Canada. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's about that Zen moment, isn't it? That Zen. You know, you're aware of the pipe, you're aware of the vape, and of course, when you're dripping, you have to be. Uh, so anyway, he asked me. He asked me. Uh, you know, do we use a, a drip? And I said, yeah, it's a it's a berserker, Vandy vape berserker. I said, I, I've got a, a mini one on a little pipe I've got. And I've just ordered two for the uh, Underwood mods, 22 mil. And he said, that's that's fine. He, he actually recommended the K from Light. 
uh, 22 mil. But he said, actually, he uses the Berserk as well. And when you look at his actual drawing, I think what he has in mind, so the Berserk, I don't have it with me, but it, it's it's like in two sections. So you, your actual tank bit here, it's solid, obviously, it's solid, solid black in my case. There was just some air, air holes in. Uh, but it's just a tube and it's flat at the top. And then you plug in your mouthpiece. And the reason is because you drip in, you can take it all off. You can inspect your coil, maybe move move your wick about a bit. Uh, and then you can drip and then you can put the mouthpiece back on. But the actual tank bit is just a straight tube. The tube itself can come off because you've got to expose the bed and you build the coil on the bed. And then you put this straight tube on top and then you put your top section on with your mouthpiece. Okay. Looking at his drawing, I think what he's going to do is say, discard the top section. You've got a nice tube here and his mouthpiece is the stem of the pipe. Yeah. He will make to fit that 22 millimeter diameter. So it will sit on the top of the tube and it will look like a flush mouthpiece. Genius. <laughs> Instead of just making something like this, you know, and then you just push it in and jobs are good and it's actually made for the tank that you're using. Great. Now they're not the cheapest, but you'll see that on his website. But just even if you're not interested in, in, in buying a handmade wooden uh, e-pipe, just go and have a look at them. They're just they're just beautiful. Handmade as well, handcrafted. Uh, he's a true artisan. So he said he started it. I said, "Do you want a deposit? Do you want?" You know. He said, "No, no." He said, uh, "I'll tell you when it's ready, and then you can we'll work out uh, you know the transfer." He's told me what it is. Uh, it's no more expensive than say an Underwood mod, but I don't have the, <laughs> the cost of getting it from Australia, and of course. We're still in the single market. Uh, flipping Brexit. Just spoils it for everybody, doesn't it? Otherwise, you know, there would be a huge import duty because it's classed as a tobacco product, even though it's wood. <laughs> but anyway, uh, anyway, we're still in the single market. So I'm thinking, I don't have to pay any tax coming in, customs. So uh, it actually works out quite a bit cheaper than an under one mod <laughs> so that, that's that's good if it works out like that so yeah uh, he said it takes him about two weeks to make a pipe because he does it like as a hobby you know oh, I can't wait Savinelli 320 mm. it's a beautiful pipe go and have a look, look at one it's a really nice pipe uh, and I've always thought it, it would make a nice e-pipe I wonder if he knows anything about the 18240 batteries. I'm trying to look for them. My little, it's one of my favourite pipes, that little pipe I've got. It uses this tiny little battery. It's about three quarters the height of an 18350. That's how small it is. I just can't find them anywhere on the internet. There's one place in America that has them on their website. But they're always out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Why do I get these 18 through? 40s because I think the one I've got is coming near to its life expectancy which means that pipe then is rubbish and it's a really nice pipe it's just so small and pocketable so if anyone knows where I can get an 183240 battery from let me know <laughs> let me know I'll, bu I'll buy 10 of them or something like that <laughs> so I've got a stockpile but I, I, I wonder actually if he knows about them because it does mean uh, an 18240, in a sense, it's better for an e-pipe because you can actually make it the same size as a pipe. With an 18340, you've got to make them quite big to fit that battery because the battery fits in the bowl. Can't understand why they just don't shove it down the uh, stem of the pipe. But hey, I'm not a pipe builder. There's probably a reason. Uh, but an 18240 is so small that actually it's the same size as a, an actual normal pipe. 
uh, you only get about the 20 minute vape from start to finish. Mind you, that depends a lot on your coil as well. So, you know, depending on your coil, you know, you, you may be able to push it longer, uh, 40 minutes, something like that. But uh, to me, that fits in perfectly well because, you know, pipes are there just to relax with. Like I said, it's about getting in the zen, zen zone, isn't it? The zen moment, 20 minutes. You only take about an hour or two to charge. So the next time you're ready for a vape anyway, you've got the battery, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, whatever. 18240s, if anyone knows where you can buy an 18240, please let me know. <laughs> I've looked at whatever it's called, the Alibaba website or something in China and, and Fast Deck and no one seems to sell them. Maybe they've stopped making them. Maybe it was for a specialist product and, and, and they don't make that product anymore. So there's no call for the batteries. I don't know. Right. Finishing my last of my homebrew. And I'm going to go and have something to eat. And then have a relaxing evening. But uh, hope you're doing well. We're going to hear, I think, uh, on Sunday if the lockdown is going to finish. Well, not finish. It won't finish but eased I hope not or hope it's not going to be drastically eased and all uh, politicians are all worried about the economy and well I don't know if they are but certainly the people who give them funds and money <laughs> for the campaigns and stuff they're worried about their economy because the shares are probably going all the way down and they're not going to get a dividend this year so uh, they're probably pressuring the government to open up the economy. But for me, it can stay like this for another six weeks. But then again, I work from home, so it's not really that much different for me. But uh, yeah, uh, out, out sooner, the economy absolutely tank. But we all know we're safe. And to say, oh, well, the economy is picking up now. But yeah, but my auntie just died <laughs> you know let's get things in perspective but anyway we'll see on sunday what happens but uh right i'm just going to enjoy the evening now so thank you very much for watching and uh, i'll see you again in the next video bye bye for now